Hello, God and Diane, beautiful and talented people, welcome. Welcome back if you are returning and just welcome if you are new here. My name is Alice and I am the face behind Here is Warm and Cozy podcast. My podcast is mostly about knitting. Uh, I'm recording from my house uh, in the northern part of Iceland and um, yeah, I have some things to show you. So, um, we are at home, we are back home. If you have watched my previous episode, we were traveling around Iceland. We spent like almost three weeks on wheels and it was amazing. Uh, we saw so many things. We were sleeping and um, chilling and I was knitting a lot and we were hiking a lot and we were enjoying the the beauty of nature in Iceland and uh, the weather wasn't so bad but it wasn't also it wasn't um, very warm weather but I like for hiking and for sightseeing a bit cooler weather so now we are at we are back home and we are kind of taking um, a little break <laughs> we um, but we actually packing again for the next trip so uh, yeah we have quite a long vacation uh, time here and we are just absolutely enjoying and getting ready for the next working year so um yeah it is so interesting then like almost 400 people uh, are subscribers and those are people who mostly i do not know so thank you for your subscriptions it makes me a very um it makes me happy so I know then I'm not talking here only <laughs> to myself when people are watching. And yeah, I got so many comments and thank you all. Thank you all for them. So um, yeah, it's, uh, it's um, my feeling is like um, today I'm having uh, you, all my viewers, as a guest at my home. And yeah, why not? Come and take a afternoon tea with me <laughs> and um, usually when I'm watching your podcast I'm knitting and listening and watching so grab your knit and grab your coffee or tea whatever you like and um, let's begin so the first one thing I am I have finished uh, it's a small little very stylish accessory it's a curtsy color by park williams which i've knitted with um with um mm -hmm, uh, knitting for olive um, silk mohair kid silk mohair in color quince so it's i wouldn't say then it's yellow it's uh like light mustardy but Probably the camera shows a little bit different um, picture. Yeah, so it's a very fun and very stylish piece, which I definitely want to make more uh, in different colors. Um, I recommend you try it. What I did a little bit different uh, according to the pattern, you are knitting all the uh, color part and this ruffle in one strand of uh, mohair and you do more increases in the ruffle part if you see my <laughs> the basic part is with one strand of mohair but the ruffle i didn't want it it's so ruchy so i decided to to increase double uh, number of stitches and um, yeah make it double stranded 
So, in my it's a little, this one is the first one, and this one is a little bit, you know, more, um, maybe for adult woman. <laughs> um, but um, I'm definitely going to make more. Uh, the the first one in my head is white, <laughs> and um, yeah, I many di many different colors. So I made one my I think in size small, and I think it's quite enough. Do I need a bigger one? I don't know. I'm a size um, large here, at least in the shoulders, so definitely large. So I think it's it's quite it's quite enough for me. So I didn't want it to like uh, not stay on my shoulders, so be larger than my shoulders. So it's fun. Yes, I already tried. This is I'm wearing now with uh, like a little flower dress, but. Um, I have uh, already worn it with a, a, just a short, like business short. It makes a different look of your outfit if you are wearing business short and this color like under that <laughs> um, short color. So yeah, people are making in uh, very crazy colors so originally her picture is a neon pink and um, you know I bought a small set for the next one it's uh, like a very neon coral um, orange I, I like like brighter and warmer colors so yes, in my local knitting shop, the um, the shop owners are very trendy girls, <laughs> women, and uh, they already made for these curtsy colors such a, you know sets. So you don't have to think about yourself. So it's a mini uh, hundred uh, superwash merino in color flamingo. They are dyeing themselves, and this is Ito, Ito Japanese um, kid mo hair. And you know, you you can knit it and vary it this pattern as you want. You, for example, I was thinking maybe this I can knit the, the body of the collar in this uh, thin merino wool, and to make a ruchi or ruffle uh, with um, mo hair. We'll see, but very very interesting nice piece and um, yeah recommend okay as uh, you have seen from uh, my the beginning of this episode I have managed to finish a cotton dress I think I was speaking about this project um, in episode number three yeah, so uh, it was just an accidental cast on uh, with no specific pattern, just a simple raglan, even with no short rows. And um, my idea was to get a read, you know, um, of uh, my old uh, Drops Paris cotton stash. And um, uh, yeah, and I just started with no specific pattern, and it went uh, it went uh, quite fast. Um, and um, yeah, I have finished this dress. I think in the beginning of July, and it has been worn already a lot, a lot. So. Um, let me talk a little bit more about this. I have made myself a little note. So first of all, first of all, uh, about the material. So it's a it drops uh, Paris cotton, and um, when I have been reviewing my stash, so I saw that the most of the balls I have was in that lime green, or actually it's a, a color. 
um, called wasabi <laughs> and one of uh, my viewers commented oh yeah it would be great to see this wasabi dress so let's call it wasabi dress <laughs> um, yeah so um, this cotton wool not this this cotton yarn um, uh, is quite thick I think it's something like 90 meters per one skein yeah so it's um it's worsted worsted weight um, as I already mentioned my size is something about L and uh, I knitted it uh, as long as I can and uh, I made it full length for my large size and I am 180 centimeters so it's a, it's a generous it's a generous work needlework um, um, uh, this yarn this yarn is fun and fast to work However, it does peel a little bit, especially the darker. You, you can see this peeling on the darker colors. For example, on this um, uh, on this um, purple, you see. Yeah, but it's, somehow it's no peeling on a lime or wasabi green. So um, yeah, um, I did some increases for the for the skirt part but just a little bit so it i could say then it's uh, almost a straight pattern so um since i was knitting with this wasabi color as the main color so i was just repeating some um uh, color stripes uh -huh. and then that means then on each each stripe has two uh, thread ends right so cotton is quite tricky yarn uh, to hide the ends or to weave the ends and um, I can show you how it looks from the back so the roll changing I did in the middle of the back and um, yeah I am sorry then I did not know this jogless jogless stripe uh, method maybe I'm pronouncing not correctly so um, the the the, the uh, um, uh, changing the rolls, you you can see a little bit, but does it bother me? I don't know. It's quite it's quite neat, and I can show you how it looks from the other side. So from the other side, it looks like this. Yeah. So if you are knitting, I don't know, with cotton or stripey stripe project my recommendation would be uh, maybe to make this round changings or row changings uh, on the side like under your arm i think it would be less visible than in the middle of the back but my was here because I don't know why I put this little button and you know just yeah but I am very pleased with the results I have got already many comments and um, um, I'll definitely use it a lot more uh, next summer and uh, I think it's perfect for Iceland because because I don't like to wear um, weather in Iceland is not predictable <laughs> in summer I mean uh, so uh, and even though if it is a shine sun shiny weather and warm and uh, sometimes it is um, quite um, uncomfortable to wear 
like uh, shorter dresses with no nylons or tights yeah um, that's why I am very pleased with this length so it keeps me warm and I think it's very trendy now these stripy items and um, yeah uh, if you um, would like to knit something like this then uh, later I found then Kuto Akika she made a pattern for her dress I will put information on what kind of dress it is it looks from the first glance the same but she has a different construction it's her dress is not a raglan it's a different construction so you basically start from the back side then pick up for the front and make a round neck and um, knitting down yeah and then um, yeah uh, she was making also a sweater version i think it's stripe high right yeah so it's um it's a sweater then definitely for more stripy ideas james and watts has very interesting not a st exactly stripy but like color block i think it's fun and also could be fast knit so yeah everything about freedom colors and why not why not to wear colors I already told you many times uh, then uh, what about me I love all colors doesn't matter <laughs> doesn't matter I'm not afraid of colors and uh, it, everything depends on you know my mood do I want to be just a gray today or I want to be this stripey <laughs> yeah so try it um, what about the weight you know what um my scale battery ran out so i couldn't weight it but it is approximately one kilogram so what <laughs> so what but it fits me perfectly and um, it works for me okay so i was thinking then i will you know use so much yarn from that cotton box I have but you know what look at this this box is still super full and I now I just normally can close the lid so I still have a lot of um, different colors of um Paris and we can take a look what else I have so this one some kind of interesting um bamboo acryl and um, cotton for for some small project um a lot of a lot of Paris and I think I even found this something from my deep and old stash. I found some uh, Turkish cotton, which is a very good quality and thinner, so more delicate. And uh, yeah, but but I'm not a fan of cotton knits, and I have to decide. Maybe I will donate this fun box full of colorful cottons to school or maybe kindergarten I don't know because I am mostly a wool knitter but sometimes why not the, the wasabi dress is a fun project yeah and I made a useful piece of clothing and I'm very proud then uh, I went uh, from not just enjoying uh, knitting things or knitting for other people, but I now I enjoy to knit for myself and I know what I want and um, um, I can fit 
for myself the, the clothes of course and um, and um, actually wear it uh, maybe some one of you uh, knows what I mean because uh, many people are knitting now it's like a cool trend <laughs> um, I'm happy about um, but um, I have heard from many people then you know yeah, I've spent like one month to create this sweater, but it's something this and so I, I don't know. Do I like it? Something here is not comfortable. So the problem can be with the fit or with the colors or I don't know, maybe with the, um, some mistakes, um, knitting tension or the fabric uh, you have chosen. And um, people are struggling actually with wearing their own made and handmade uh, garments after they spent quite a lot of money for the materials and quite a lot of time. So um, don't stop, just go ahead and um, just knit, knit, knit and you will, if you want, you will achieve your knitting quality and you will find your mm, patterns or your fit or your favorite um, yarns to create a wearable uh, garments for yourself. Okay, so one small little fun project. I was inspired by um, Sari Nordlund, uh, she had a pattern, it's a free pattern in Finnish. I'm so sorry that I wasn't recording how I was reading the pattern in Finnish, <laughs> but I understood everything. <laughs> uh, so it's a crochet, she's saying it, a, it is a pot holder, but I made for myself. Uh, it's not a pot holder, but it's like a coaster, which I am putting under the teapot. And uh, yeah, it's uh, just a very simple uh, spiral crochet uh, made with the same wasabi um, cotton, but I held it double, so it's, it's like nicely thick. And uh, she was uh, knitting her with um, a white... Um, wool probably and making a small pompons but i had this woolen pompons you know which you can buy in craft stores and i think oh that's such a good idea which i can use for it was like one morning <laughs> while i was drinking my cup of tea and eating breakfast so i created this and it is such a nice, um, such a nice little accessory for your home, and we need those because, because I love my home is nice, warm, and cozy. Do you? <laughs> so, when my mother saw the pictures of this, she saw I uh, she she said and she wants it. Um, as well, the same, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to meet her soon and uh, I am planning to crochet one for her. She's living in a white house, <laughs> I mean, not that white house, but just her interior is white, and um, yeah, I have bought this, um, the same woolen uh, bubbles uh, in um, monochrome so probably will make a white mat for her and uh, we'll add this monochrome uh, bubbles yeah okay let's go let's go next I don't want you to be bored 
and sometimes uh, I have disadvantages like especially when I'm uh, trying to create something with a rather new material for me and uh, yeah maybe I'm a little bit tired when I'm starting but but um, um, I'm enjoying to knit or crochet and um, it kind of if I'm if I'm tired it kind of relaxes me so I'm not doing any harm by um, you know starting a new project when I'm tired for myself uh, so one uh, I, I, it was also in the beginning of the summer so you know um, people were a lot of knitting uh, different um, triangle construction like four triangle construction stops um, I wasn't buying any specific pattern because I know how to do it and uh, I decided yeah I don't know which uh, summer we will have uh, cold or or um, warm but um, I want maybe something with the spaghetti stripes and also I have plenty of this cotton uh, yarn so let's just begin uh, with those four triangle construction and uh, we'll see maybe I um, just will be okay with the top and maybe I will and make also some kind of a dress and if it is a uh, colder weather so i think this spaghetti strap um, garments are nice you know just to wear uh, like under the jeans jacket yeah this is like or or linen short over so and this is a total disadvantage because Mm, I spent here like I think four balls of it's a nice pine green uh, mm, color and I am sure absolutely sure that the dye lots were the same but all these four balls were in different shades and uh, <laughs> I started this in the evening, so completed to need still this place um, like uh, late night. And um, I put it nice and I always want to review what I have done in previous day in the morning and when I saw them all these <laughs> triangles and everything is, you know, it's a sharp line. So. I am not going to work on this. I am. I don't even want to frog it. You know, it's a, It's okay. It's okay. Sometimes to have these misadvantages, so, uh, and I'm not going to finish it and over die like I had these ideas. Do I need to spend my life to work with this and then over die and you know? No, no, no. So it's okay. It's going to a trash bin straight away. So maybe this uh, shade difference was because it's a uh, stash yarn. I don't know, but I'm keeping my yarn in plastic boxes. Um, and it's not exposed to the daylight or sun so we are having a storage in our uh, garage and it's heated and there is no daylight at all who knows I don't know so okay this is I think enough about the cotton um, because um, we are slowly moving to autumn season and Yes, in the last episode I was showing my whip, uh, which I have managed to finish. And I need to, I need to show you. So, I have finished this posh. It's really posh. <laughs> Telemark cardigan. Okay, I'm trying to try to try it. Try to try it. Yeah. 
So telemark cardigan has the, the name of the pattern and the pattern is free from drops design has nothing uh, <laughs> common with the television. <laughs> no, Telemark is a place, area in Norway and um, the, its garment is a little bit special for me because when I was a student uh, I spent a year in Norway in that area I was living there and uh, practicing a little bit medicine so I always wanted to have like Norwegian like um, traditional sweater and, or cardigan and um, if you ask me which I like more sweaters or cardigan well it depends but um, I think uh, cardigans are more practical so yeah and um, this one is um, knitted with alpaca and um, sunless garn um, thin kit silk mohair. hair look at these buttons so um, this wine wine I actually needed to google how to pronounce correctly <laughs> wine wine <laughs> and this ornament um, yeah and uh, some similar is on the buttons yeah so looks good fits perfectly um, if you have seen then no if not you have seen but if you see um, it's not just a color yoke. So the first, this lightest pattern uh, began under or before uh, the armpits uh, on the body and sleeves and it knitted bottom up. Uh, I don't want to dig in so much the wool, the prices, expenses and numbers. I have managed, I have uh, spoken about this already in a previous episode but i will put all information about the yarn uh, sure in the description box but um but um, yeah um, i've made a little bit of changes in the pattern so in original pattern um first of all my color choice is different yeah but uh, she had the, the model has um, some uh, in the, like uh, inclusions in this wine wine section and I didn't want it to mix it because I think this uh, main um, section is so like nice and impressive then I would do a little bit of too much mix yeah, and sure, I also had uh, short rows and I needed this flat. So I needed color work back and forth. And uh, this is not my first time that I'm knitting this uh, wine, wine. <laughs> and I always like mixing it, but this time I, ha I haven't made any mistakes. So I'm very happy about this cardigan. It's extremely luxurious um, fabric, which yarn made and uh, is very warm. It's 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 already blocked and it has beautiful, beautiful halo. And we are just waiting for a fall and winter. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Do I have something finished? Yeah, little bit, little bit of baby knitting, baby knitting. So um, um, sometimes we need to switch to some smaller, smaller knits, and usually. These smaller knits for knitters are socks 
Um, I'm not talking about socks this time, but I will. <laughs> Maybe next time. But um, I have bought uh, patterns from Petit Me and uh, made those epic bonus. <laughs> Um, this is for my relative baby and it's so, uh, you know, uh, you probably have seen this funny, funny hat and uh, yeah, so cute. And I, I thought and the, I did not know whose pattern it is. So I was searching in Ravelry, uh, kitty, kitty hat and I couldn't find. So... I was thinking, how could it possible? Because because it's definitely popular, and it is not a kitty; it is a bear. <laughs> but I still think it looks like kitty. Mm. Also, the the uh, the hat is um, knitted with recommended um, thin merino from Knitting for Olive and. Um, Kid silk mohair, yeah, and it is a, a three to six month size. And of course, uh, when I saw from which website or yeah, from which which designer it comes, I discovered a lot of more very cute and already seen um, garments for little people. And I could not resist to not to purchase this pattern for this lace hat. This is also knitting for olive merino, thin merino with no mohair. It's a thinner and lacy banana lace hat. And um, yeah. Um, I am planning to make an um, matching leggings in with this pattern. You know, I purchased the pattern for this lace leggings. So very, very sympathetic design. Yeah, I think it's all like from my current finished objects like speaking about baby needs it's like not always I'm knitting baby needs exactly for some one child um, as you know <laughs> if you've been watching my podcast before I am a rich mother of of um, five and I have um, probably a possibility to become a grandmother of many grandchildren so sometimes I'm just knitting and it makes me happy to to knit for those small babies and um, like some time ago I've been knitting this which is waiting for a baby and um, it's a um, overall with mittens and um, I have been just trying to to learn how to marl with thin wool. This is Faroe Island wool, Navia, uh, which I held double and um, I don't remember now which one exactly, but it's the one which will which one is the thinnest, yeah, so it's not thick. And then yeah, this all crazy colors which marled and the matching hat with ear flaps and small crochet. Yeah. It's a size six months probably going back to my vault <laughs> and wait for yeah for some baby who would like to wear it or whose mother would like to have it to put it on her bambino 
Okay, so uh, works in progress. Works in progress. Yeah, uh, I have mentioned that I am uh, planning to make some new garments, like wool garments for my kids for a new school year. And um, I uh, cast it on a Dahlia cardigan uh, by Lena Holme Samsue and knitting it with Drops Nepal. It's just a little bit, there is nothing to say except I am doing it my way. I'm following the pattern, but I'm knitting it bottom up. But she is. Um, she's recommending to knit it top down yeah so i don't know i just wanted to knit it opposite direction then for another daughter which is about my size i'm knitting this sweater she's blonde girl and she loves blue color as well as me but she loves like mostly blue <laughs> and um, this is traditional sweater by a, a pattern called Nordur by Jix Knits uh, and um, yeah I'm knitting it with traditional Icelandic wool Lehtlopi and this vibrant blue color lapis lapis blue and it's just two colors natural white and lapis blue and uh, she picked this design herself so she do not like very colorful um, outfits but it's a style um, kids teenagers they especially whose whose mothers or grandmothers are knitting they like kind of have to have some new love pesta to wear and to to yeah to <laughs> to be in style so jix knits um, i purchased it pattern from etsy but I'm not sure, maybe she is in on Riverly as well. So, yeah, if you haven't uh, been trying to knit Lava Pesa, um, maybe it's a good idea to uh, start to work with uh, just a two color color work. Because for those who are not uh, so skilled in uh, uh, stranded knitting, uh, the, I think the most common mistake is too tight gauge, especially for the yoke part. So it would be rather difficult if you are not so skilled um, color work knitter and you would pick some pattern where it's like four or five uh, color strands in one row. Yeah. Um, it look result looks um, stunning, but uh, maybe it's not the pattern to try to you know learn this technique. So keep it slow and definitely recommend this. This is a new pattern. It's not old, so and it creates this. I like this nice kind of arches, nice arches and the color will be also white so yeah i'm gonna finish it very soon very soon and then i will need for the next daughter <laughs> yeah and for my husband and we all need a new outfit <laughs> for upcoming upcoming season okay um I think I will not talk today about some purchases, acquisitions, I don't know, uh, because um, 
because uh, I already spoke about some um, purchases in my previous episodes and um, I think I will leave something for the next time. Um, I wish you all a nice rest of the summer, a <laughs> nice day and um, knit and um, create nice things, create nice environment around yourself and uh, I do believe then uh, we can create around ourselves the world we like to live in. Don't wait, then someone will do it for, instead of you or for you. Do it yourself and do it now. <laughs> do it today. I forgot to mention that you can find um, more of my works uh, on Instagram. Um, thank you for all your subscribings, comments. And I do read all your comments. And if you like this episode, please give me a thumb. Bless, bless. I think I will try to knit a little bit to work on this sweater. <laughs>